genetically engineered foods are changing our economic and agricultural landscape. Over 90% of U.S. grown corn, soybeans, canola, and sugar beets are now genetically modified. The rise in genetically engineered foods is becoming a growing concern for natural food growers, as the impacts are already creating superweeds and superbugs, organisms that have grown resistant to GMO herbicides and insecticides. New controversial genetically engineered crops about to be introduced include apples that do not turn brown when sliced and genetically engineered salmon that grow much faster than wild salmon. Monsanto and other biotech companies assure us that genetic engineering will ensure global food supply and sustainability. But are the negative health and environmental effects of this technology being hidden from public view? It's time to expose the truth about genetic engineering and the patenting of life. Genetic engineering is not an extension of natural plant propagation. It is a laboratory technique that inserts a foreign gene into the DNA of another organism. This experimental process does not have any guarantee of safety. Mixing plant, animal, bacterial, and viral genes will lead to unpredictable and uncontrollable results. Examples of unforeseen changes seen in genetically engineered foods include poor crop performance, altered nutritional content, increased levels of toxins and allergens in foods, and potential harm to the environment and ecosystems. Herbicide use increases because of genetic engineering. GE crops, which are designed to withstand herbicides, actually cause hundreds of millions of pounds of additional herbicides to be applied to farmlands. In fact, glyphosate, the world's top weed killer, has greatly increased in use due to the spread of GMOs. The massive glyphosate load on farmlands caused glyphosate-resistant superweeds to proliferate, prompting use of stronger and even more toxic pesticides. Due to glyphosate resistance, new traits have been developed to use the herbicide 2,4-D, one of the primary ingredients used in Agent Orange. In plants, glyphosate disrupts the shikimate pathway, which is involved with the synthesis of important amino acids and other components. It is generally accepted in the scientific community today that glyphosate is not harmful to humans or to any mammal since this pathway is absent in all animals. However, recent research shows that glyphosate isn't minimally toxic to humans after all. According to a recent study, glyphosate inhibits cytochrome P450 or CYP enzymes, which play crucial biological roles. It enhances the damaging effects of other foodborne chemical residues and environmental toxins, and the negative impact on your body is insidious and manifests slowly over time. The consequences are the most common diseases linked to a Western diet, including gastrointestinal disorders, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, depression, autism, and cancer. Genetic engineering does not increase crop yield potential. It actually lowers crop yield as glyphosate kills essential nutrients and beneficial organisms found in the soil. This depletes soil quality, hinders the plant's development, and leads to plant diseases. Additional traits engineered into these plants are an energy burden and typically require more water consumption and irrigation from our depleting fresh water sources. Genetic engineering is an energy-hungry technology. Large amounts of energy and fossil fuels are still used for the production of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, Roundup, and other glyphosate herbicides used in GMO agriculture. Genetic engineering destroys the environment. Glyphosate pesticides severely harms both GMO and non-GMO plants and even leads to sudden death syndrome, SDS, a plant disease that causes plants to turn yellow and die. The added pesticide load affects wildlife and non-pest insect populations, such as the fall in monarch butterfly populations in North America brought about by the propagation of Roundup-ready corn and soybeans. Herbicides and pesticides pollute air, soil, and drinking water, posing health risks to farm workers and consumers. Genetic engineering does not help solve climate change. Inserting tolerance to extreme weather conditions in genetically engineered crops is a very complicated process. Thus, claims that these plants are a climate change solution are false and unjustified. Genetic engineering will not help eliminate world hunger. There are no GE crops available that increase intrinsic yield. GE crops are no better than non-GE crops at tolerating poor soil or unstable climate conditions. In fact, natural breeding methods that produce efficient super crops like flood-tolerant rice, drought-tolerant maize, and pest-resistant chickpeas may actually offer more security for our food supply. 
Genetic engineering has never been proven safe. The FDA does not have a mandatory safety assessment process for GMOs. Regulatory assessments on GE foods only come from biotech corporations, the same companies that profit from these positive safety studies. Independent researchers who wish to conduct studies on genetic engineering are forbidden to use GE crops. Once they reveal issues with these foods, they are criticized, their work called flawed and insubstantial. More than 50 countries all over the world have now restricted GMO crops and have passed GMO labeling laws to protect consumers. But the United States and Canada are yet to join these countries. But change is coming. On November 6, 2013, Washington will vote on People's Initiative 522, or the People's Right to Know Genetically Engineered Food Act. This proposition unites consumers, food growers, and health advocates as they call for the labeling of foods that contain genetically modified ingredients. With enough votes, Washington's Proposition I-522 will be the first GE labeling law in the U.S. and the first step towards transparency between food companies and consumers, giving you the right to know. Help ensure the success of Proposition I-522 by making a donation. Your contribution will help create awareness on the effects of GMOs in our food supply. Stand up for your right for truly healthy, sustainable, and naturally grown foods. Donate to the Label It Washington Proposition I-522 today.